Why does it clean corrosion? Because it gets paid to clean corrosion. Why does it put the lotion on its skin? So it doesn't get the hose again. Come on, man. What are you, a crackhead? What kind of question is that? Hey everybody, how's it going? So today we're gonna be working on a MacBook. It's an A1466 MacBook Air. What we're gonna do with this MacBook is the same thing we do with every other MacBook on this channel, Pinky. Try to take over the world. What are the problems that you notice with this MacBook? What is broken? What is wrong? No, battery not connected is fine because if it got liquid damage, which looks like it did. Right over there. Then you want the battery to be unplugged. What else do you notice? Red dot is red. Indeed it is. Liquid damage. Wi-Fi cable, yes. These are not routed properly. Definitely correct. That should be routed differently. What else do we have here? What else is wrong? What do we notice? So the Wi-Fi cables are supposed to be behind here like this. My right speaker is under the board. So yeah, the right speaker does not go under the board. It goes, it goes into the connector. You can see the cable is stuck under there. So that, that sucks. And every one of these things must be noticed. Because even if I fix their current problem, if I don't fix, if I fix the problem they brought it to me for, that's not good enough. You need to fix everything. So you need to note everything that's wrong with it to make sure that when you're giving it back to the customer, you're not giving it back to them with anything wrong with it whatsoever. So I am going to attach my power supply, put it on the screen. And I might even use the good old-fashioned Paul Daniels multimeter software. All right, so it looks like we get 200 milliamps, but no, but no green. Actually, here we have a green light, no fan spin, 200 milliamps. Usually that speaks to a short to ground on our PP bus of G3 hot. Let's see if that's the case here. Usually that's what that is. So one of the things I like to do is I power the computer off of a power supply. It's a bench power supply rather than off of a traditional MagSafe. So on the other end of this is just tying into a power supply that's putting out 18 volts. Because I want to see how much power the board is taking. Because it's going to give me a, a shortcut way to tell exactly what is wrong with that particular board. And a lot of the times, when it's taking 2 to 250 milliamps, but dead, our PP bus is shorted. And this is supported here by the fact that PP bus G3 hot, which is supposed to be showing up on the screen using Paul Daniels' software. <clears throat> here we go. It's 3 volts instead of 8. Now, a short would bring us down to 1 volt or so, not 1 to 3. So that's a little weird. So I'm going to take the board out of the case, and we're going to examine it. But you see, do you understand why it is that I'm always checking the amperage that the board is taking before doing any work? It, it gives me a shortcut. Instead of having to measure and check every single line, the last time that I had PP bus, I mean, the last time I had uh, figured out my problem was PP bus G3 hot was shorted to ground, I correlated that in my head with the fact that the board had been only taking 250 milliamps when I had that problem, which is why I always keep in my head, and eventually, if I, have, if I were a smart business owner, I'd write it down when I have a specific amount of amperage being taken, and I would tie that to the problem. We need to fix the MacBook to the point where it becomes a ThinkPad, says Mario. That's not going to happen. You the wrong screw in the wrong hole. So see how the fan is kind of moving around like this? It's because the screw is not tightly hitting the top of the fan. And it's not hitting the top of the fan because you got the wrong screw in the wrong hole. Wrong screw. Wrong screw. Long screw. First thing we're going to do is on PP bus G3 hot. I'm going to show you where, why it is I'm checking that in a moment. I'm going to check and see if I got myself a short to ground. 
I'm going to open up the board view for the 820-00165, which this board happens to be. We're going to hit the schematic in the board view. I'm going to put it on the screen. So here's a list of power rails in the machine. Remember, of all the rails, G3 hot comes first, then S5, S4, S3, and SO. G3 hot, always on. S5, on when the machine is off. S4, on when the machine is hibernating. S3, on when the machine is sleeping. And SO, on when the machine is actually on and working. I'm sorry, I don't understand what that means. I appreciate the 499, and thank you very much. But I don't know what that means. So we are going to go back to this. Let's check up on people by G3 hot, which I could find right over here. See if it's short it's a ground. One point two. What do you know? Short it's a ground. Now we could search around the board and see if uh, something sticks out to us as a PP bus short. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. One way to find out, folks. One way to find out. In a moment, I'm going to turn the microscope camera on. I keep forgetting that to get Paul to fix the buttons on my camera. I'm pretty sure he could figure it out. He's a smart guy. He figures out all the stuff that I wind up breaking, and I bet he'd help me figure this out, but I always forget the moment the stream is done. Maybe Hi Hi can remind me. Can you guys email Hi Hi at rossmangroup.com and ask him when I'm done streaming to give my microscope camera to Paul to see if he can get the buttons to work? That's Hi Hi, H I H I, at rossmangroup.com, two S's and two N's. Don't delay. Spam hi hi today. Spam hi hi. Like he's cheap canned meat. Okay. Get the light on. Yeah, it'll be nice once I can get white balance and all that back. Yesterday's e-bike display stream. Huh. Oh I, I still don't get it. I'm sorry. So turn to the audience, to your personal assistants, to have the other assistant do work. You know, you're starting to understand the way this company works now, man. All right. So these caps near the CPU are usually it, not it. There's some green on this transistor, but that's not it. Corrosion around the capacitor, but it doesn't look blown up. Green. There's actually more damage to the PP3v42 area. I would expect this to not be working. Sensor area. Thunderbolt chip. Well, we have a couple of different candidates. So what I like to do when I have a couple of different candidates for what it could be is run some voltage through the board and see what gets hot. First, I'd like to just redo some of that nasty PP3V42 underscore G3 hot area over here that's seen better days. And nothing crazy, nothing crazy. You know, just a little bit of... A little bit of flux, a little bit of hot air, and it'll be good, you know? Yeah, no big deal. All right, so I just want to use a little bit of hot air, not too much, just to make sure that I reflow this stuff and get rid of the corrosion. Why the short on the wire, this red wire disappeared after you disconnected the display? Hmm. Oh, so the display was always shorted. Okay, now I get it. Hmm. Did I check for the short before or after disconnecting the display, though? Kind of curious. I mean, did I check it before and after uh, getting the display off? 
Or did I check it only after the wiring harness was off? Either way, that display is in a better place now. That place is in a, that display is now safely thrown away into an e-waste container where it belongs. That video had Eli view numbers. Last I looked, it had like 3,000 views on a channel with 1 million people. And I get it. It's boring. It's not the most interesting thing, but like, holy shit. 1 million subscribers? My balls. My balls. You gonna convince me that that's not like Google hyping their numbers up in some way by getting bots to subscribe? No. That's some... I don't know what it is. Alright. Every place we see a little green. I'll make sure the solder connections were not fucked up. Anywhere where I got a little bit of green. You can work on bike after that. I added a 10 ohm resistor in, the f in line with the fuse as well to, for the screen. So I'm hoping that it's gonna, if it's gonna cut off the potential for like some of the overages. So I've been, I started messing with the KP and KI settings again. I have not heard back from Grin, but they're probably just thinking to themselves at this point, what the fuck is this guy doing with our stuff? Go away. I don't know. Someone, if someone started asking me, do you have a polyfuse on the input or output of X device that you sold me? I think the first thing that I would tell Kevin to do is say, like, just tell them you, you just uh, uh, make them stop. Make them stop. Make it stop. You're asking questions at that point that qualify you as a pain in the ass customer. Like, I'm asking them questions that make me a pain in the ass customer. Poor grin. My other controllers appear to have come back. But before, the input and the output had zero, like 0.5 ohms of resistance, and today none of them do. So I kind of want to see if, they, if those magically recovered. Speaking of recovery, no recovery will happen for this JTAG connector. Die. I want you to die. Die like a psychoanalyst when I'm changing my KP and KI settings without a resistor or fuse in line between voltage out of the, my controller and my screen. Die! Filthy JTAG connector! Get the fuck out of here! So I've been writing company standards. Uh, I wanted to take all the company standards and really like beef them up. But also, so one of the things that I've wanted to do, and you guys please let me know if you think that, um, if you have input or anything that you'd be able to contribute. If you have something to contribute, please email hi hi at rossmangroup.com. So I've kind of been playing with this idea of an industry trade association that's gonna do uh, three different things. First, it is going to support people who create educational materials like real educational materials, stuff that where once you learn it, you can active, you can immediately turn around and then offer services to customers using that that allows you to make money. I want to offer that and I want to make it available for free to people in the industry. You know, no, uh, the second thing that I want to do is advocacy. Let people know outside of, you know, the, the text section of Reddit that right to repair is an issue, you know, normal people. And the third thing would be the helping teach people how to lobby themselves. So not really like hiring Charlie Brown like lobbyists, but rather teaching people how to advocate and deal with their own politicians and not on, on them to death and not be scared showing up at 
Because, you know, if you've you got a politician that's had like 72 or 200 of their constituents show up, you know, one after the other after the other, then when you go to a hearing, it may be slightly different. And one of the things that I hear a lot from, from the opposition politicians is that there's no standards in this industry. They have no standards. They're not certified. Well, a lot of people have been saying, you know, I should create a Rossman certification. They'd take a Rossman certification over some A-plus shit. But to have a certification, that means that you're certifying someone to a specific standard. So you can't have a certification before you have standards. And I'd like to create, I'd like to kind of have a board of people that are, you know, respected and experienced and successful in the industry. Work along, you know, like work with me to develop standards. And we're going to start really, really basic at first with conduct, basics of having a repair shop. And then, like, later on, we'll focus on a specific device repairs or, you know, here's how, you know, don't, ba you know, stuff like when fixing an A1369 screen, if you're doing LCD cell only without display assembly, wear gloves so you don't get fingerprints and marks on the, or oils on the backlight diffuser layer. You know, basic stuff like that. Or, you know, every item in shop must have an address so that you know where it is in your shop at all times. If you separate the SSD from the machine, put a label on it so it doesn't go like, you know, basic shit like that. I want to actually create that so that it, you, we can say that we have a set of standards that actually mean something. Because I've been reading about this WISE certification and like CTIA is trying to do the same shit, but they don't have any buy-in from the industry. Nobody likes CTIA. They lobby against right to repair. They're not repair people themselves. They're, they have no idea what the fuck they're doing, in my opinion. They don't have authority in the industry. Nobody is really like, oh my god, I'm CTIA certified. This is amazing. No, no, nobody's really bragging about that. But I think if the people who are the best in this industry could come up with something, maybe it's something that could actually be made to work. Maybe, you know, if the people that are actually, people do want to have businesses that are similar to theirs or, or people who are in their shoes making the certification. But you need standards first. And I would like to, if possible, get input from as many people as there are and do this in some sort of open way where I'm taking in as much information as I can from others. The issue is that there are many people out there who are going to think to themselves, wait a second, standards are a part of my business. Why am I going to give you what I spend time developing? But at the same time, I think that it would be good for the industry if we could say, listen, we have a set of standards. Here's some basic agreements. So it's not... You need to use a Dymo label versus a piece of artist tape to label the SSD if you separate it from the computer. Just the basic shit, like label this so that you don't lose the customer's data. Uh, some, some basic good faith stuff like that. And I'd like to get input from the community. And eventually, once it's all done, I'd like to be able to post it into some sort of wiki and not allow everybody to edit it. I don't want to do that. But what I want to do is allow everybody to submit potential changes that are then a a group of people then go over and debate amongst themselves who are considered, you know, authoritative in the industry that this is worth it. And I actually don't want to restrict the content for when people join the association. I actually want it to be the opposite. I want every single customer, potential customer of our business to be able to view these. So if we have a standard like, you know, the machine must leave the store with everything it came with. Every machine that comes in should be cleaned before and after. So that, like, it, it should, nobody should think to themselves, it's not my job to clean it. The, the person should get it back cleaner than it was. Basic shit like that. If you're doing a water damage repair and you see that there's an item, like let's say over here, where, technically the circuit worked, but it had corrosion on it, don't leave it like that. Don't only fix the problem that's keeping it from turning on. Fix everything that's going to cause this thing to potentially come back within the warranty period and outside the warranty period. I think if consumers had the ability to read this list of standards and understand that we take this seriously as an industry, that they would feel a little bit less stressed out about going to an independent repair shop. And this is something that's go that I'd like to actually do full time and I am putting in a bit of work to establish this, uh, get myself to a point where I can establish this is my full time job. So rather than my full time job being doing, you know, working at my business and building my business or just making videos for my business like this stuff, my full-time job would then become at running a trade association that helps people in the business, that 
advocates for the good of the business, and that doesn't do this as a hobby. It's not something where I show up at a hearing, you know, once every year and a half or so and say my piece to a politician and then go home. Something where my job is making sh is coming up with ways to actually add real value. Not and I'm it's something I'm something I'd like to put some time and effort into. I think it would be you know get can I get certified to solder? With two D's. Yes, you can. I'm going to be evil because my banana clip broke off and I'm going to solder the ground wire over here. I'm going to do this before we set industry standards, though. I'll be grandfathered in. All right. But this is something that I think would be a really interesting way to spend my, my 30s. And I want to actually get something done. I wouldn't want this to be this type of... Uh, you know what I'm talking about, this kind of shit philanthropy where people pretend that we're providing education or something when in reality you're just updating a school's textbooks from 1999 textbooks to 2000. It doesn't make any sort of tangible difference in the lives of the students, but you technically get to say that you provided them with updated textbooks through your organization or foundation. I want this to be the type of thing that actually creates real change in people's lives, that allows people who started out the way I did, instead of having to risk their own money, their own finances, and their own sanity, figuring out how to do everything from scratch, where people who are good at what they do actually have an incentive structure to produce content similar to me because there'll be a means within which to compensate them. Because I produced all this shit that I produced and had to do everything after I figured it out and tortured myself for years to figure it out, and also for free. And I realize most people are, they're not going to enter an industry where every single thing you have to figure out on your own from scratch and if they do all that work of figuring it out from scratch, they sure as shit are not going to want to give it away. It is what it is. And I've tried to get people to realize that with business models like mine, I have given away every single piece of information I've learned on how to run a business, how to deal with every element of it. It's somewhere in this YouTube channel. Every little piece of how to run a business or what makes us different, sets us apart, or makes us special is all out there already. That nothing is being you know, held close to the vest and the business has not suffered because of it. But in spite, like I get that people are not gonna do that. I'd like to actually have some sort of proper professional framework within which when I find people who are providing good resources to the community, I can actually make sure that they continue doing that. And I wanna keep it as technician focused as possible. Nothing offered here should be pretty, pretty uh, kind of fluff crap. It needs to be something that someone in the industry would say, wow, that's actually useful to me. But I think, but to do something like this, there's gonna be, there's gonna be a requirement for a lot of buy-in. And by buy-in, I don't mean money. I mean buy-in as in people that are smarter than me, that may have something that I don't, are willing to contribute their thoughts, their time, or resources. And by resources, again, I don't mean money or items. I mean their, like let's say if we're making a standards list and I wanna look at everything that everybody, I'd like to see the ideas that everybody else has or what it is they've put together for their own personal businesses so that we can come up with a framework of what works, what doesn't, what's good, what's bad, and really kind of put something together that's not a joke. Because when you look at the WISE certification and stuff like that, I mean, that, that shit's a fucking joke. I mean, there was some line in there, I don't remember because it's been a while since Jessa showed it to me and we were laughing on the phone about it. There was, by the way, I'm injecting uh, an amp into the, uh, no, of one volt into the board right now at 0.6 amps. We're going to see what gets warm in a moment. It says something like updating the customer's phone when you do certain repairs. Never fucking update the customer's phone without their permission or explicitly asking them if you want to do it and telling them that there's a risk that after I do this, your phone dies. Fucking never do that. That certification is so beyond fucking stupid, it makes me sick. And the people who wrote it most likely have nothing to do with repair. And if I really, really wanted to get depressed, those people who wrote that certification and are responsible for promoting it likely all have more money right now than I will make throughout the rest of my natural life. Life's not fair, you know. It, it, it was never advertised as such. But I'd like, to, I'd like to start something that is not a joke, where, you know, the input is actually coming from the community, so we don't release something stupid like that. And I'm, I'm coming up with the organizational framework to make this happen before I go ahead and fully finish starting the organization. Because starting an organization like this is something that would take time, 
And since it's going to take time to start it, I figure I might as well hit the ground running with all the stuff that I know I'm going to need later. All right, so we're going to up this right now a little bit. I'm going to put my finger over here. Nothing hot. Put my finger over here. When I yell ow, that means we've found the component. The please bro cam is in the other room. Ow, ow, ow. Okay, so I think it's right around here. The ow test always works. This has got to go in the standards book. The ow test really does get, get the job done. Who's the joke? Most of us are, alas, says Vladimir. You guys are not the joke. Oh okay, is it the one on the right or the one on the left? Is it the one on the right or the one on the left? They're both evaporating at the same time. You son of a bitch. All right, you know what we're going to do? We're going to take both of them off at the same time. Two caps at the same time, baby. Two caps at the same time. Yeah, the OMFG that hurts test. That's definitely going to be in the certification right there. Coffee tip or whatever your poison is. Why, thank you. I actually have a protein shake next to me. It is uh, coconut water, banana, and some protein powder. All right, let's see which. I'm gonna remove the cap. Let's see which one gets rid of the short. The left of the. I'm gonna start with the left one. I think that may be a crack. See that up there? That is a crack. That is a crack. That is a crack right there. See that? Crack. Crack in the corner of the capacitor. Die, capacitor, die. Die, capacitor, die. Get off of the board, capacitor. It's time for you to get off of the board, capacitor. Wait a second. I have my iron set to 300 degrees. What the fuck? God damn it. Of course you're not going to come off the board. Love listening to these streams all working. Recently replaced my Dell Latitude with the ThinkPad L480. Thoughts? I think that you replaced your computer. Yeah. Sorry, I'm probably more boring than you expected. I don't know. I haven't tried either of those two machines, so I really have nothing to say on either. I mean, if anything, you're the one who replaced the computer, so I should, it's, it's your thoughts. I didn't replace my computer. I have no... All right, turn the power supply off. You can see the short went away once we did that. So I'm gonna replace this capacitor. We're gonna put the board to the ultrasonic cleaner afterwards because you never know, there may be corrosion hiding under something and that may be a standard, another standard. Yes, standards. But. And I think this is going to be really important because we are, one of the things about my business is that I entered this business when I was broke and destitute in a recession economy and we are about to enter something way worse than 2008 because we spent way worse than 2008 and we leveraged way more than 2008. So we are about to enter something way worse than that. And an industry that allows people to start with nothing and really make something of themselves with a really low barrier to entry, low cost to entry. This is going to be really important for people to get back and, and recover. And there is more stuff to be fixed out there than you can ever imagine, particularly since people are not going to be able to afford to buy new anymore. So this type of business, being able to thrive, is going to be really important. And as time goes on, we are taken less seriously. Repair is taken less seriously. People are, you know, the, the policies that many of the companies have are becoming more and more anti-repair. And there's really no one standing up and pushing back against it full time like full-time getting people to actually learn how to enter the business, full-time making sure that we're advocated for as if... Huh. And I, th I think that, I think I could put together something that could make that happen. It's gonna depend on whether or not I have earned the authority from the people that are in the industry to be able to get what it is I, that I need when I need it. Have I earned the authority? Because you don't get authority because you have a million subscribers. No one gives a fuck about that. And definitely nobody gives a shit about you know, having an organization or anything. You earn authority from people 
by producing, then after you produce something, showing them how they can produce something, and then getting them to teach other people how to produce something. Like, you have to keep going up like that. It's not like people in the industry are just going to help me because, look, I have a million subscribers, or look, I have an organization. You're like, what have you done for me? What have I done for you? I got to earn it. And I guess I'm going to find out if I've earned it from the people in the industry when I decide to start pursuing this. And I really hope that I get the opportunity to work to show that I can, that I can represent the industry well, and that the directions that I, the things I choose to focus on and the help that I need is worth giving. I guess that's, you know, one of the fears when you start anything. Are you worth what you're asking for? I'm excited to start. Yeah. Over the past two or three weeks of the business, I've taken a role of noting what other people are doing, the standards to which they're doing it, without me actually doing any of it, to see how things would run if I were not here and to see how things would run if I decided to, let's say, take on this challenge of doing a trade association as a full-time job. And so far, I've been really, really above and beyond humbled and honored at the fact that the people that I have doing their jobs here do them so well that I'm really pretty much obsolete. I would be, I think I'd be necessary if I wanted to take the business forward to another step. I don't think that things would continue moving forward, like, you know, way more efficient ways of doing certain things or entering certain new services the same way. But I, th I think that we've gotten pretty far as is. And the amount of additional work I could put into my business, I think would lead diminishing returns versus the returns that I could get for the entire industry if I make this uh, my full-time job. There's so many p things to do and so many places to... There's so much stuff to get done. There's so much ground that hasn't been covered. I'm just reflowing the areas that had little bits of green on them. Before. Don't let any green go unnoticed on your board. We're going to check the other side and make sure nothing is corroded on the other side. Then I'm going to plug it in. And once I see the fan spin, I will leave and never come back ever again. That's probably flux from the other side. You'll never see me again. Are you, what are you, one of our two brain-dead presidential candidates? What kind of question is that? Oh, yeah. accepts charger DC in or else it gets the hose again. Oh, power supply is still at two volts. No Oreo. Bad Oreo. And we've got fan spin! That's it for today, ladies and gentlemen. And as always, I hope that you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now!